Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium. So last time I almost lost my voice doing this guy's uh, very gravelly voice that I'm not going to do an impression of because uh, my god that was uh, a little bit much. And this time we're going to continue exploring and hopefully we need to steal things. We've got to find his jacket. That's our only new quest from today. We also need to go and speak to Joyce at some point but we've got all day to do that so that's fine. The child in here. Hello child. Is that a kitten? Hello, mister. A, a young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on a sofa. She's looking at you with frank curiosity. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. I heard there was a girl here who has armored gloves. Is that you? Oh, she looks alarmed. I had gloves, very big ones. Heavy too. Where did you get these gloves? Found them when Lambie and I were playing hide and seek in an empty house where nobody lives. I think someone ate them in there. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. And where are the gloves now? She pouts. I hate them. The twins were going to take them. They're stupid. She lifts her stuff to stuffed toy up and looks into one of its remaining eyes, as though searching for confirmation. We're going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He announces the last two words carefully. Okay. So it's good, he's, he's on board, he wants us to get more armour. Oh, she doesn't seem to understand, but Lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. Well, they're in my sand castle. She points somewhere outside. Bind our house under the sand. You can break the castle, it's not very good. Are you uh, Lillian's daughter? Yes, I am, little Lily. She gazes at you for big eyes. You know my mum? Yeah, we met earlier. That's nice, my mum was great. She nods. She's never angry or anything. Are the twins outside your brothers? Yes. He frowns. They don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. And suddenly she starts snickering. They they look the same. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell them apart. They look identical, right? I said the same thing. They look identic. <laughs> she slowly uh, processes the word, then snickers with laughter. What's that? Pointing at the stuffed bird from the ceiling. It's a grouse, she yelps, smiling broadly. You might be able to get on Garty's good side if you replace the broken skewer you almost certainly broke. Can I have it? I know somebody really likes stuffed birds. Sure, just go ahead and take it. Don't like it anyway. Luke's angry. Alright, now you just need to go grab it from the ceiling and go. What's that thing you're holding? It's Lambie. He's my friend, sort of. Like, she holds a fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lamby is a stuffed lamb that admittedly has seen better day or yeah, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and uh, the fur is tattered in several places. I've been saying lamby, but it's probably lammy, probably lammy. Yeah, uh, lammy looks soft. Oh, you know what? Oh, okay. Pleased to meet you, lammy. Lammy doesn't usually like strangers, but you're also fuzzy like lammy. Goodbye. Bye. That was good. I'd like to get this now. Fantastic. That was easy enough. And we got some coal pellets. And we know where to get the gloves. So we can be more intimidating and authoritative. Yeah. Definitely. So we just need to go break a sandcastle now. Out onto the beach. There's a sandcastle, right? Sandcastle. Weather has not been kind to Lily's little sandcastle. The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back at you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb network. Well, I'm going to reach into the catacombs and pull out the shiny object. The walls and floors give way to the giant's greed, collapse and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Congratulations, that's the gauntlets down. We're doing good on the armor collection front. Nice! So, we just got, well one, we have the grouse. Uh, the bird looks extremely ruffled and slightly grumpy. And we got these gloves. Clenching and unclenching your fist has never been so fun. The tiny ceramic plates make a lovely clicking sound when your fingers move. The gloves are a bit sandy, but the grip is phenomenal. Oh, they give us interfacing. Oh, so they're just a straight upgrade on our current gloves. Fantastic. Does that unlock any new things? It should. Uh, if I've got any interfacing, I failed. Yes, that unlocks the map wall. 
Oh, uh, okay, cool. And the mirror. Okay, good. Not that I think I tried the mirror, because it was like no chance of success. Is there any way to get here? Ah, it takes me around. That's okay. Um, just going to keep exploring over here. Look like there's too much over this way. Oh! The little black swallow circles above you, you hear it chirrup. I'm not going to head up there yet either, I just want to make sure I finish this side. Because I'm sure that this looks, yeah, that looks like that would lead me over to the church if I continue that direction. Or well, this is going to lead me somewhere else, probably to a dead end. A drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street. Before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps, just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened. Across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Crater is filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is grey already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? A warm tub of water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. 4, 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. What about the bus stop? Number 312D. Young girls used to come here, huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats gave them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. What about the road? Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of flow of trade. There's one bump on the road. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away, right at the turn. A dead dog? Tragedy came from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle. Hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. Oh, so we killed a dog as well. Alright, that's enough. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. Okay, I'm just checking. Yeah, we do still have a skill point saved. Cool. I just needed to remember that. Right. Let's head up here. Let's see what else we got going on. We got this thing. Let's have a look at that. I guess I need to go further. Rust eaten letters uh, read Mazout. The rear tire of a motor carriage adorns these reeds. That's Nolan's Ving Seat or Ving Sink, an unsuccessful model. Ooh, a box. Inside the box are morale and a health. Ooh, love it. Our morale's fairly low. It takes a constant beating. Oh, down this way? That's fine. I can do the running. Looking back at you from the rust-colored water, you. I'm just shocked. We saw our own reflection. Okay. If we head this way, we should just get more beach, I'd imagine. Yeah. Oh. A kick drum pulse. The music is coming from somewhere on the ice. A school of fish huddled around the fence post, then scatter into the dark. Before your drawbridge, it can only be lowered from the other side. Full of holes, could the posts hide treasure? Look inside. Uh, oh wow. I actually can look inside all the posts. Well, I mean I'm going to. It's got us health as well. Someone's saying, damn, it's cold outside across there. Oh, okay. Yep, more of that. More, wow, this is fantastic. This is amazing. What a haul. Yeah, I'll take it all. Is that it? Still fantastic if that's it. Yeah, okay, so we need to walk around this building to get to whoever that is. It's fine. Where's this building? That's a church. You feel the shadow of a very large building fall upon you. Oh, right, so we're here. 
So we'd have to go around the church to get to that. Okay, I see where we're at. We're really exploring the rest of the map here. Dusty appears in the shadows. Many seem to be missing. The whole game's opened up on a Wednesday. An altar shrouded in the dark or something like that is too dark to tell. Do we want to go in church? Oh no, the sign reads St. Brune 1147. I'm going to walk around the church first because I want to see what's up with that drawbridge. Yeah. Can I walk around? No. Okay. Wait, what was if I try and walk there? Let's see where it takes me. Maybe I have to go through the church to get there. I'm curious where it takes me. Oh, I can just walk through that bit. Oh. Well, never mind then. That was too easy. Nothing back here apart from a ladder. Okay. And what about this? Must have taken a lot of patience to do this. Painted with pastel, someone is trying to bring cheer into the world. Hello there. Is Sally? Um, a shaggy looking girl in her late teens or early twenties kneels on the ice with an electronic contraption in her hands. Hearing your approach, she looks up. Oh, hello there. It's cold out here, but she's not wearing a hat. She must be freezing. Dear child, it's freezing. Where's your hat? She looks up at you, distracted. Maybe she didn't hear you. A little louder. I said you should have a hat on. So should you. I do. You don't have to do anything. I should and I do. Oh, I didn't notice that. Um, it's nice. You should wear one too. If you plan on staying outside in this weather. Yeah, well... Look man, fuck the hat. Your pulse rises. I could try and regain authority in her eyes. It's only a 3% chance. It doesn't fill me with confidence that we'd be able to do that. Is that some kind is that kind of language really necessary? I'm sorry I said fuck the hat. I was concentrating on something else. My whole family swears and it rubbed off on me. There's a pained expression on her face. She'll answer your questions now. What's your name? Aisel. Her hair is dyed blonde, with dark roots showing. There's a coarseness to her features, some masculinity below that timidness. And your Sarah name? Why? Um, I'm from the police. It's for the paperwork. All right, then. She hesitates. It's Berger. A very common name. What's that device you have there? This. She breathes on her freezing fingers. It's a portable recording device. It's for field recording. Low quality, but still. And the wires? Well, actually, just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to the contact microphone. What's a contact microphone? A contact mic records all sounds from inside things like this ice. Your mangled brain would like you to know that there is a boxer called Contact Mic. Uh, what am I supposed to do with this? No idea. Does this have anything to do with contact, Mike? Uh, she confessed. Yeah, I recorded stuff with it. No, I mean the box or contact, Mike. Ah, no. This is a contact microphone. It's for recording inside solid objects. Contact, Mike just beats people up. You know, contact, Mike doesn't just beat people up. Contact, Mike is a role model. Um, an entire litany spews forth. Um, yes, you heard right. You should try and be more like Contact Mike, a successful athlete and an inspirational figure who, who has overcome social, physical, and mental obstacles. Man, you are one weird cop. Um, this is not about me. This is about your lack of respect for one of boxing's greats and for yourself. What is it with you and this Mike guy? She pauses. The question is rhetorical. Okay, if it floats your boat, I'll be more like Contact Mike and less like me. Uh, contact, the litany of Contact Mike. So it'd lower your logic, conceptualism, and drama while researching it, but it only takes 15 minutes. Okay. 
It's time once again to return to the 20 things you like to say about Contact Mike. The boxer who is, apparently, a paragon of open competition. He doesn't really seem to get any better than this, any better, both inside and outside the ring. Stop. Point at someone. Someone in the distance. Point your finger at him. He will point his finger back at you, uh, vaulting an impassable gulf of, fina of finance and privilege to... I kind of have to, don't I? I'd like to internalize the litany of contact, Mike. Yes, that does indeed float my boat. Uh, yeah, good, good, good on you. She turns to check her tape recorder. How does that thing work? The mic? I don't exactly know. Somehow it doesn't pick up vibrations from the air. The box said it only picks up structure bond sound. If you like techno babble. I, where did you get the mic from? Some place I got the recorder from. The Palasium. What's the Palasium? Oh man, you haven't been to the Palasium? She forgets herself a moment. It's the coolest place in this whole drug shit shithole. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop on Bogey Street in Jamrock. Musicians live there and like real musicians. I once saw Arno van Eyck. Thinking about it really cheers her up. It's a long way from here though. Sounds interesting. Who's this Arno guy? Oh yeah. She looks you over, assessing your age. Guess you wouldn't know Van Eyck. Or really be a Palasium going kind of person. I get down. I I don't know what that means. I grind. I don't know what that means either. Um. Well. Nor do I, but I have concrete evidence that I rock in the form of a wreck tape player and a completely trashed hostel room. That's cool. She breathes in her fingers. Looks like she doesn't know what to say. You're right, time has deserted me. Morale critical. I can save this though. A little injection. She looks at you oddly. Sucks, man. She squints her eyes for a second, trying to remember something, then lets go of it. Uh, was there something else about the contact mic, perhaps? Actually, I had some non-mic questions for you. Okay. What are you doing out here in the cold? Recording, I guess. Um, what is it you're recording, exactly? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice, but there's no way to tell, not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps, too. Not sure how that will sound. She scratches her forehead. Wait, what happened to the headphones? My boyfriend stole them. For what? Well, I don't know, man. Things. Just stuff you need for life. A lie. They were probably pawned off for something... suspicious. Uh, what are the recordings for? The cracks, the footsteps? The musicians in the, pal in the Palisium use them for making music. They loop the stuff, cutting the tapes together. They like to make music out of the cracks in the ice and the keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's just it's hard to explain. I'm going to nod. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be like a music place anyway. She rubs her shoulders and looks around. I don't really know what I'm doing. They use these synthesizers too. I don't have a synthesizer. synthesizer. She looks at the recording device. The thing she thought would fill her hours with joy and escape. It's turning out to be an empty fantasy. She feels childish, very useless all of a sudden. Dig this, your gold. Lieutenant begins to take off his jacket. No man, fuck that, I'm cool. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. It's okay. Lieutenant backs up, he throws you a glance. Well. Here. You need this more than I do. I don't want to give up my hat, but I really want to give her the hat. Thanks. He puts it on. It's a bit large for her. No, the hat is gone forever. Dick Mullins' hat. You said it's supposed to be a music place? What is? That. She points towards the church. The boys think it could be the place, like the Palisium or something. Stupid, it's really. She pauses. It's not going to be the Palisium, that's for sure. The boys? Yeah, Andre and the guys. They're inside in the tent. And why is that? Why are you freezing out here while the boys are inside? They got too much stuff crammed up in there and no room. Stuff like what? Our music stuff mostly. Like this tape recorder, but bigger. And there's piles of it. You mean like those headphones your boyfriend stole? Yup. She squints her eyes a little. Uh, they were pretty. I'm sorry we sold those. Why not just leave some of it outside so you don't have to freeze? Stuff is more expensive than I am. 
More expensive than any of us, really. It doesn't matter. I can take the cold. I have some other questions. Um. Well, I gave her my hat and a more like contact mic now. So, let's um, pick up the tape recorder on the ice with empathy. The device is still warm from her touch and heavy as a brick. From the batteries inside, the uh, heavy as a brick from the batteries inside. The company logo Omicron adorns the yellow plastic cover. Inside the tape is rolling. The girl looks at the device in your hands. I'm sorry you have to sit here on the ice feeling miserable at your age or any age in this weather, waiting for it to get dark. She looks you in the eye, her pupils wide, surrounded by a ridiculous amount of makeup. The people who built this world intended it to be better for you, but they failed. It is easier to live in their failure with this by your side and a tap on the tape recorder. The wind howls. She remains silent. It's real. Tell her. It's not a childish fantasy. It can be a real weapon against what's coming for you. Now. What is? I'm once again reminded of how Contact Mike rose from the slums of St. Baptiste to the top of the boxing world, overcoming adversity and serious brain trauma. Nothing is coming. Nothing he wouldn't knock out of three rounds. The real fight is for the right attitude. I can't believe this turned into another mic thing. Oh, fine, okay, I'll stick to it. He takes the device from you and places it in her lap. I'll knock it out in three rounds. After a moment of silence, she speaks again. So, thanks, I guess, for the psych session. Maybe I can return it. What's been eating you, officer? What's been eating me? There's nothing eating me. Come on, I can tell. She shakes her head slowly. But okay, be a boadero about it if you want to. Well, I guess there, there is something that's been making my life hell. What is that? She listens intently. Um... It's not... I'm not gonna say I think it's all these foreign people taking our jobs. There's no way. You know what? People just keep putting their selfish interests ahead of the greater good. Oh, really? Yeah, no one understands that sometimes you got to make sacrifices for the sake of progress. It's all very distressing. So, is that the thing that's been eating you? The slow pace of social progress? Uh, no, that's probably not it, is it? No, it sounds like you've got chick issues. Um, well, now that you mention it, I found these letters I'd thrown in the trash. They might have something to do with it. Okay, wh why do you think that? Well... They were written in the woman's hand, and oh boy, did I did reading them not make me feel good. There you have it then. Chick trouble. Not political after all. Who was she? I don't remember. Really? She appears to believe you. You seem pretty upset about this chick, huh? Are you sure you don't remember anything about her? I remember her scent, and that's all. Wow, man. That's some pretty strange shit. She rubs her sides for warmth. Are you sure the letters were for you? Um... Well, yeah, I'm sure. Why would I have reacted so strongly otherwise? How come you don't remember, though? Is it like some selective memory thing? Well, I think it's more about me getting so unbelievably drunk, I completely erased all memory of this world. Yeah, it might be that, or oh, this one time did so much that booze I forgot, too. It's obvious he's done more than booze. Or it might just be psych bullshit, you know. Kogenstein wank. What's this Kogenstein wank? You know, the psych thing they've got going on there. Rich people like it. People in Kogenstein are mostly rich. Um, well, thanks for the bullshit psych thing then. You're welcome. She thinks for a second, stretching her jaw. Might be for the best to keep that shit forgotten though, just my opinion. If it itches, don't scratch. Yeah, but it itches really, really bad. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, okay, bye. He turns our attention back to the recording device. Thought complete, the litany of contact mic. 5,000 to one, rank outsider. No one saw it coming. The mantle of a game changer demands intangible quantities. Fights are not won. You're thinking instead of doing detective work right now. Fights are made. Blow by blow. Let's take it. Mike to the Mickey. 
some low intensity part of you to enter the sports cliche driven fugue state. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Also, Mike knew what it took to win. He just wanted it more. So all fizz white checks have been unlocked. So that's all physical white checks have now been unlocked. Yeah. Okay. So novelty dice maker legendary we got. We got the half life of the races lorry driver again. Well, that's not bad. I mean, physicals are weak stat, but that's still okay. Yeah, I like that all of these got unlocked again. Uh, also, where's my hat? <laughs> I hoped, I thought she was going to give my hat back, and she didn't. Wait, I just don't have a hat at all now. Oh no, I have the orange bum hat. Well, I mean... I want my hat back. I could have given her this garbage hat. Can I have my hat back? I would like my hat back. I wish to be Dick Mullen. Hello again. I guess I've lost that forever. Was that what was that giving me actually? I've forgotten what that gave me. It might be logic. Maybe. I can't remember. I, I all I know is I wanted the hat. Might be in visual calculus, but I think that no, a visual calculus has only been maxed out at seven anyway. I don't know what it could have been. Anyway, whatever. More tribalistic markings. The post is covered in little humanoids. A pole screwed into the ice keeps the tent erect. Trash from some unending party. Let's go in here and give them a piece of my mind. So I just wanted to get rid of the little marker saying there's something new. Someone's home away from home just like yours. The tent is just a tarpaulin fabric covering a piece, a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three young men are listening to some new form of music. It's like nothing you've ever heard, one of them looks at you. Come on, get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. I'm gonna squeeze in. Sorry, we barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch. He gestures for you to squeeze in. Right, while you're out here, can you convince her to give me my hat back? It's just me and them. No Kim. Alright, well. Smells like sweat laund and laundry detergent. Plus a trace of ether. A pile of nasal sprays. Brand name, Nosafed Ultra. Canisters filled with what appears to be water, the label says distilled. A speaker, the big kind they use for live music. Well, hello. You see a youngish man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm not going to shake it. This is my posse, Noid. He pauses with his hand still hanging in the air. The young man of earrings looks at you suspiciously. An egghead. Egg! He yells. The tape player high above his head continues to blast strange music. Together with a little burger, who's out there right now, doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organisers. How many music venues have you organised? We have many in the pipeline, officer. Why are you here? You see, we've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. All the soul for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. Place is a shithole. I, I apologise for my friend Noid's potty mouth. I realise this is not how you speak to a police officer. I he has authority issues. Was it something you wanted? Yeah. It's a matter of occupying ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the church. And I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dope heads and burnouts if left unattended. I know, that'd be awful if that happened. Dope heads! Burnouts. <laughs> well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin A's on the map with one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that in Revershall. Strike that, the world! And sadder yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine just how bad these dope heads and burnouts really are. 
Good. This calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. Um, I won't stand for narcomaniacs of any kind. No, no narcomaniacs on my watch. Shaking my head gravely. Yes, yes. And the worst part is, they're also spooky. Uh, what do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you'd be the judge of that, officer. All I can say is the spookiness is that kind that keeps us from restoring this church into a community center. A place of spiritual refuge. They also don't eat, I'd leave the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just want to spin tapes without them spooking it up. Place has bad sins. No one can dance like that. Thank you, Red Eddie. He turns to you. So, you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter, getting them out, whatever spooky stuff they're doing. I'm sure that's not what the Ecclesia. Uh, the Ecclesia. So, is it Ecclesia? Uh, Tias. I've never s seen uh, that, that wor way of spelling it. Or, you know what I mean? I've never seen the word turn into that way and written out. Ecclesias. Ecclesiasts? Something like that? Anyway, meant their property for. Uh, uh, to be honest, I've just never seen that written out. I've probably heard someone say it, and, I, and then when the main characters will say it, I'll be like, my god, that's, that's that word. But anyway, whatever, whatever. I'll look into it. Tell me more. All right, man. He claps his hands enthusiastically. Andre is obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. The boys exchange giddy looks. What's the status of this church? I haven't got inside the building yet. As no, as to as no to install a measure against more drifters walking in. A padlock. It's a temporary fix. I just want someone to contain the situation. I had to do it in a hurry. Not my best work. It should hold for a while. What about the key? Of course, now I'd give the officer the key. Alright. The speed freak dips into his belt and pack and produces a yellow key. He makes a sudden, cool infused move, tossing it in your general direction. Alright, be the cool cop. Catch the keys as it flies towards you. Yeah, you sense the trajectory of the little piece of metal and plastic. The object makes a small ring sound as it approaches. Just the tiniest chime to your left. Catch it. Ka-ching! The key hit, hits your palm. The speed freaks nod to you approvingly. Bask in the glory. As you know what, I'm just gonna play it cool. Thanks, man. The speed freak nods to you. How long have these people been locked in there? Oh, not long. Maybe a week, maybe? He shrugs. Are you sure they've not, um, starved to death? Oh, I'm super sure they're alive. I mean, come on, at least 90%, maybe. 85% sure they're still alive. Somewhere in the ruinous past led you here, uh, there was something called exams. You may have learned the term involuntary manslaughter there. Andre, do you know what involuntary manslaughter means? Yeah, I do. I listen to Channel 8 all the time. I know about crime stuff and I assure you, officer, this is not what's happening here. I'm at least 80% sure they're alive. I mean, come on, most people aren't even alive their entire lives. What? What does that even mean? I don't know. He pauses to think. What does anything mean, really? Oh yeah! He looks to you. He looks at his friend with an expression of profound understanding. Sounds like nonsense. You're right. It is nonsense. Total garbage. I knew you'd see through it. You're one smart cop. I get by. Now, where was I with that padlock? Uh, other questions. Sure, man. Tell us it is what you want to know. Um, who are the people inside the church? Truth is, I don't really know. None of us do. I don't even know how many there are there. And all we've seen are glimpses. Um, you haven't seen them and you want the police involved? Well, he leans in for emphasis. There's also the machinery. This machinery is of the deeply mystical variety. When I first scouted the place back in February, it was abandoned, empty. I took some time getting the crew together, and so about two weeks ago we came here hoping to set stuff up. Suddenly, there were all these strange machines lying around in here. One of them has wires running up into the bowels of the water. Wires into water, never seen anything like it. Andre, tell him about the feeling. Oh, and there was this, and the... And it felt like there was something in there with us, watching us from the dark. No, the other one. 
Um, which other one? I'm not as in tune with my emotions as you are, Egg. Felt like silence. Awful silence. For this man, even regular silence is awful enough, but that was something greater. But you haven't physically seen anyone. Not exactly. We've just seen someone who we think was a woman go in and out of the church. That could be our woman, the one we were looking for. A couple of times and we felt someone or something eyeing us inside. But that's kind of it. Uh, well, was that about something watching you? Like, you aren't alone, you know? It wasn't quite human, if you know what I mean. And it was a dark shape climbing upside down and along the ceiling like some kind of crab man. Crab man? Yeah, you know, the way it was climbing up and around the ceiling like a crab. The other one agrees. It was stalking at Isel, exhibiting ambush behavior. Odd, crabs are usually maritime creatures and not known for climbing walls. Are you sure there was a crab man? Yeah, totally. I mean, I didn't personally see it. Isel was alone at that time, but I believe her. If she came out running and says there's a crab in there, there's a crab in there. So he hasn't even been there lately? Is he afraid? You should ask her about it, but be nice. Don't tell her you don't believe in the crab. There probably is no crab man. Don't let them draw you in with this nonsense. Can you tell me more about this machinery? You should talk to Noid about that. I just got to see burnout and dope heads as sign from them. Probably jacked up to some snuff station too, probably very likely. How can you be sure they're burnouts and dope heads if you haven't even seen them? Well, honestly I can't, but I am. Why not? Let's go with it. It was a failure. I don't see a single thing wrong with that argument. He nods. I'm 70% sure they're substance users. Don't let technology fool you. He lakes little quotation marks with his fingers when he says technology. Alright, next questions. You mentioned some kind of uh, ecclesiastes, ecclesiastes are, uh, at the church. Who are these ecclesiastes? Oh yeah, that's a metanoran name for the founding party. I thought it'd be cool to use it. Before we go on, what do you mean by, uh, Meteor... Meteorin? You know, of Meteo. Concerning Meteo. Meteo? Meteo, a country on Monday? He looks at you squinting at uh, his eyes to see if you're kidding. On the Monday I saw la? One of the poorest of the first world nations today, but once great ancient civilization, capital, um, Thylakos by Pisontic. Uh, what is the founding party? Come to think of it, I've never looked them up, you know? I can't give you a very precise definition, but they're a very powerful and religious organization. And? Oh, and they have roots in ancient mass society, he pauses. Uh, and they're the custodians of the uh, Perican uh, Carnassian Church. Plus, they anoint the innocent. They, like, make the innocentric system, no? Um, doesn't sound like, like a dance club in their church. You're totally wrong about that. He shakes his head. The Perk the Perkinassian Church is about love. Anodotic music is about love. I owe love for my Perkinassian pose. Love is the re relay out of death. We dance. He violently shakes the tape player, as if to see uh, he can't break it. Love is hardcore. Unity. Unity. I'm sorry, his accent has changed about ten times and I just can't remember I can't get it right. Anyway. This guy I also can't get right. Make some lo noise for my insulin Dian posse. He turns the volume up, then looks at you with a knowing nod. As if obvious you'll break into dance. It's as if it's obvious you will now break into dance. You can feel it, the anodes and the cathodes coursing through you. Your big toe starts tapping along to the base, as if testing the waters. No words, enjoy the beach. Beach. Beat. My god. Reading comprehension. Needs work. Feels good. Uh, I don't understand what you're talking about. What's a posse? Your posse's like your people, man. Like you and you, you got your cop posse and you look out for each other and you party together. That's a posse. And where is your posse, detective? Nothing comes to you. The world is silent. Okay. It sounds like you've just been saying random things. Love, posse, make noise? Are we? He looks at you, uh, mysteriously. Yeah! The one with large head really enjoys it when his friend gets mysterious. This love can be pretty hardcore. 
Oh yeah, it can. He's coming around. He, gives, uh, he nods at his friend and turns to you with a mischievous grin. You're getting it. Um, well, no, this is too much. No sane organization want this level of absurdity in their church. That's pretty downbeat. I think I speak for all of us when I say we expected the law to be more open to the idea of love, unity, and the pericarnassian posse. I don't understand a single thing you're saying. Yeah, he shrugs with melancholy. I know you don't. So you got more questions? The one with a large head is still looking at you, nodding his head, waiting for your body to start moving. His expectation is fierce. You can't get scared of moving a little bit, are you? Get the grind on. I want to ask you about this tent full of equipment. Yes, and what? Um, I see you brought your own water. Yeah, yeah, good to have it. Bitch to carry. When I first scouted the place, I did some reconnaissance. Not sure the church even has running water. Nice to still, too. Oh, he doesn't know what to say. It's the one they sell at the fuel station. He's li it's like he's lying to my leash, but he's slippery enough that there's nothing for you to grab a hold of. Okay. I need to tell you, it reeks of sweat in here. It does, doesn't it? Told you we have a smell problem. He picks up a piece of telephone cord and expects it. Um, it's mixed with a peculiar chemical scent, like laundry detergent. He sniffs the air, then shrugs. Doesn't take a forensic scientist to guess it's drug related. They look and act like the kind of guys who've done their fair share. However, their breathing is regular, their jaws stay put, and their pupils aren't dilated, so not under the influence right now. At least not under the influence of stimulants that doesn't rule out hallucinogens, uh, benzos, and some depressants. How do you know all this? What's with all the uh, nosafed? The what now? He leans in as to hear you better. The Nozafed Ultra. You have a lot of it lying around. Oh, the Ultra. We, um... He's like an actor looking to the, uh... Souffleur for his sign... Uh, for his line. I have a major sinus infection. Stuffy nose. Uh, all we can do is shit's all blasted up. Winter can't even breathe. You sound fine to me. Yes, he nods energetically. It's all Nozafed's doing. Without the nose, I'd be drowning in shit right now. Nozafed is the shit. Can I have some? I have nose problems too. Uh, sure. Hey, more health. He picks one up from the corner and hands it to you. Here you go, officer. The nose up. Blast away. Alright, enough of this. I have logic I can do to him. He nods enthusiastic enthusiastically, no doubt a little relieved. So, because I've caught him out in the Nozafed and the headphones were sold here, I got some logic against him, but... He's convinced that I'm convinced I'm a smart cop and narcomania is a plague means that I can't get his logic. Maybe everything isn't quite as been told, take a moment to analyze. Let's do it anyway. 3%. Ooh. Well, first of all, you're a smart you're a smart cop, and a smart cop like you would understand if something wasn't quite right, so this should be easy. And then there's a narcomania. Indeed. So one of them came up for the uh, upon the abandoned church and wants to turn it into a club for dance music, but agents of the Narcomania have overrun it. You should have think of all the narco they must have already consumed in there. Narco is bad. Plus, it has to be considered. You can't invent the future of dance music in a smelly old tent. Imagine if you had the church that settles it, the analysis complete their story checks out. See ya. Uh, be careful in there, officer, and tell us how it goes, yeah? We'll be here. Hey, what's up? So you had a talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Noid? Good. Skin shows through the holes in the Speed Freak's too large sweater. In front of him, an open toolbox full of carpentry tools and parts. It's good you talked to Andre first. Gave me time to get a reading on your sign. Can't really talk to people before you get a reading. He runs his hand through his hair, which is combed back in mock seriousness, and continues to fiddle with some gears. Sign? Yeah. You gotta compare, see if we can align. Interesting. I suck at socialising, man. Even now, a sign synchronisation is way off. But I'll see what I can do. He continues to rearrange his tools. Why are you called the no Why are you called Noid? He picks up some sort of widget. The hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It's not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. It's not easy to reach a harmonic resonance of signs without some adjustment. Does this mean we need sign matching? Yes, further sign matching would do good for us. One way to achieve this would be us getting into the church. Tell me about the machines you saw in the church. 
He cringes. Weird stuff, specialised. There was a data processor and some sort of long wave machinery. Wires going into water. Gives off a spy sign or some fucked up Samaran science sign. You know, the kind that goes first into, head first into the supernatural. The People's Republic of Samara is a product of the Revachol sister revolution on the Grad Isola. It's known as a severely degenerated rogue state. Uh, don't be too hard on Samara. They're all alone in the world. Half of what we know from them is just propaganda. I, kn I know, man. I was just talking about the aesthetic. What's with the uh, supernatural? What's wrong with the supernatural? Nothing's wrong with it. You should def it should definitely be researched. You can still do sick shit with it, though. The sickest? That is perhaps why it should be researched. So the supernatural, you think it's real? That it actually exists? Most of it doesn't exist, but there's also stuff that isn't allowed to exist because the moralists think it's too dangerous for the plebs. Sonic powers, pale-related diseases, pretenders pretending to be human, folk rights, that sort of stuff. Alright, I'll come back later. Hey, what's up? A young man with a perioxide blonde hair holds up a Harmon Wauxhai um, tape player, nodding along to the music. He looks at you with a knowing smile and says, as though you're supposed to be sharing some sort of tremendous evangelical secret. Hardcore! Is it? It's hardcore! Sorry, hearing it, I could. It sounded exactly like the Canadians from South Park. That that is the only thing I heard out of that voice. All right, so just gonna say, it, keep saying it's hardcore, aren't you? Skiba D, skiba danger. I am the rearranger. Could there have been a right way out of this garden of forking paths? You think? Wait. Oh, Th this is a this is a puzzle. Solve the egghead puzzle. Let's see. This is hardcore. Is it? It's hardcore! You're just gonna keep saying that hardcore, aren't you? Skip a D, skip a danger. I am the rearranger. Okay, let's try again. Back to the heavyweight jam! There's the young man with the tape player in the large Mboadero boots. Lung shaped trees sprout on his silver belt buckle. Hardcore! Is it? It's hardcore! I don't know what to say to that. Skibba D, Skibba Danger. I am the rearranger. Well, I guess I don't say is it to start Be with. Close. Says the young man with the tape player and yes, okay. True, hard, full, car. Saying nothing. Hardcore. Nothing. Hardcore to the mega. Nothing. Internally coherent. I was wondering if you knew who killed the mercenary hanging behind the Whirling and Rags hostel. Good morning, yeah! One, two, three! Yeko Kata, the place to be! Why is this Yeko Kata the place to be? What does it mean? Oh, I can't click this for some reason. I'll use the keys. Yeko Kata, the hardcore place! Yeko Kata is an abbreviation from the Grad Turn Zone of Ecological Catastrophe, an agricultural mega product. Uh, project in this extreme southeast of the Grad Asola involved uh, cutting edge approaches to irrigation and a completely new type of fertilizer. An intricate system of irrigation networks pot marking the earth, intermittent seas of phosphorus mud, ripped tarpaulin fluttering in the wind, and a pair of molten rubber boots also comes to mind, all in all, a truly hardcore place. Hey. We're close. True. Hard. Full. Car. No. Hardcore. No. Hardcore to the mega. All right. Here comes the night. Nope. We're close. True, hard, full, car, hardcore. Hardcore to the mega, internally coherent. Nope. All core, all right, yeah. Nope. He furrows his brow at his very large head, tr as his very large head traces the sublime, invisible movements of the music in the very s real air of the stuffy tent. Hardcore! Ah! He lets out an agonized roar of the feeblish, uh, obviously not too hardcore beat below. So hardcore. Is it though? He stops dead in his tracks, tilting his head to the side. It is! But is it? I mean, really? He tilts his head to the other side like an owl. Feels like you should reply with the very pinnacle of idiocy here so that things get totally transcendent, but you haven't really gotten there yet, so you don't know what to say. Uh, I was thinking that too. I am the Mike Enforcer. I 
All right. The club. True. Hardcore. Hardcore. Internally. Co all core. All right. Yeah. Is it though? It is. What is it? I mean, really. I don't know what to say exactly. Under the radar. Over the top. Okay. Let's try again. The True. Hardcore. Hardcore. Internally. Co all core. All right. Yeah. Hardcore. Ah. So hardcore. Is it though? I was just thinking that a moment ago. One mind, one spirit. There's no other world. There's no other life. Okay, try again. Vic, true, H hardcore. Hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. All core. All right. Please, yeah. tell, please tell me what exactly are you doing? Gotta get the people going. Why? I'm the party boy. It's my job. What's party boy? Hardcore party 25-7 beyond the winter's orbit style. There is a place far away in Katla, beyond a certain latitude known as Winter's Orbit, where there are 25 hours in a day. It's a tremendously cold place, abandoned to drunks and failed rock stars, full of eternite depression and path-finished ski-flying hills. The Suru live there. Okay, let's try this again. The club. True. Ha hardcore. Hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. All core. All Gotta get the people going. I'm Why? the party boy. It's my job. I think I'm also a party boy. Two on a track, watch your back, watch out for the heart attack. Nope, okay. The club. True, H hardcore. Uh, I mean, but. But is it? I mean, really? Yeah! This young man adds a capital G before the H in his yes and their axe. This produces a guttural, got Waldy an accent that makes him sound more animal, more in it. Or maybe it's just not, it's not got Waldy, and maybe it's, uh, orange, uh, Orangees, probably a homage to Orange, where Ar Arno van Eyck is from, judging by his name. Could you be listening to an Arno van Eyck creation right now? Is this the famous uh, van Eyck I'm hearing? You know about him? He moves his mouth, but sound doesn't come out. His eyes are the sights of saucers. Looks like you've rendered him speechless. You know van Eyck? Yeah, I'm a major Eyckhead. Wow. The skinny wraith looks at you with some disbelief. So am I! So am I! He begins to shake his head so everyone would understand. Oh, is that why they call you Egghead? Because... Egghead to the mega! The K became the G! The boy became the man! The advent? Did I solve it? No. Okay. The close. True. Hardcore. Yeah! Okay. You know about you know Van Eyck? Your friend, uh, Asel mentioned him. Good, good. The advent? No, okay. The true, ha hardcore. Yeah! Yeah! The Y to the E to the A 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 to the G to the H to the hyphen mark! Yeah! Yeah! Um... Well... You missed an A there. I yelled mine with six A's, so you have to yell it with six too. I'm the hard rhymer, the track attacker, the mic enforcer, the sixth checker. I am the law. Okay. The true hardcore, hardcore to the all core. I all missed it. Hardcore. Ah. No, but seriously, I'm a little worried. It isn't. The question is, what is the question? That would have been good if I had asked you a question, but I didn't. Now it's just idiotic. But there was a question. The club. What? True. Hardcore. Hardcore to internally coherent. All core. All right. Yeah. Ha. The question is, what is the question? Just answer the question. But there was no question. What? The club. True. H hardcore. Yeah. The vite. Yeah. You missed an A there, but that's okay. I'm a pretty lenient cop. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. The true. Okay. Hardcore. Hardcore to the mega, internally coherent, all core, all right, yeah, hardcore. The question is, what would the? Yeah, okay. The club. We'll get here eventually. Hardcore, hardcore internally, co all core, mm. all right. Ha is it though? One my. Nope. The close. True. It ha auto hardcore, saved on me. I've been here long enough. Core, it auto saved. All right. Ha is it though? What is it? I mean, really. The question is, what is the question? 
No, but seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. He frowns and starts bobbing his head back and forth once more. I did it. Don't be alarmed, everything is okay, he isn't actually worried, everything is still super hardcore. What he probably means is it could be even more so. Um, okay, you said you were worried. What do you think was wrong with the music? There is nothing wrong with it. I'm still in love with the hardcore. He turns pensive all of a sudden. Sometimes I just feel like anecdotic music is in the infancy, you know. For example, take this Arno van Eyck jam I've been pumping for the last month, and I will continue pumping for the rest of 51. Something isn't something holding it back from being hyper. He thinks for a moment, then his expression clears. It's like it's only ultra. I think it's super hardcore, but you're right, it's not hyper hardcore. If anything, it sounds a bit proto. It's like it's not fully formed yet. You might be a moribund alcoholic and a failed cop, but you're pretty certain that thing cannot be both proto and hardcore. It's proto, not hardcore at all. Whoa, culture cop. I think you may be right, but then how could I bec how could it become hardcore then? I know it in my heart, but I cannot think in my head. If that was not hardcore, then how could anything be? Try to think if there was anything that could make it harder core. What? Looks at like you with customary amazement. Guys, there's something happening in my head. I'm gonna keep thinking harder. Oh yeah, he's doing it. But you're not. This is almost certainly a matter that surpasses the limits of reason. My imagination fails me. I know, so does mine. He laughs and shakes his head. Uh, that sounds suspiciously like a question. I thought the question was... Was the question? No, this is the answer. Um... Wait. I can't help you if... Wait, I just remembered something. I I'm the police. Uh-huh. The man is bursting with anticipation. Actually, that's more likely to hinder us. Oh. I can't help you with this right now. I need something else. Something extra. Uh, yeah. He's not even the slightest bit disappointed. Are you a thought reader? No nation, but trans... Nation. No war, but class war. I mean, you're a thought reader? Wait, so you're not a thought reader, you're a communist? He's not a communist, that's just something he likes to yell. He's picked it up from the tape jockey at the Palisium. She was a communist, though. Yeah, with a rebel, yeah! Does that mean you're a thought reader? Wait, but aren't you a communist? Communism, <laughs> no. Um, does that mean you're a thought reader? Don't be a lunatic, of course he isn't. Jermaine here just yells random things. Odds are, sooner or later, one of them will come off as thought reading. Yeah, Revishal Imperative. Unless you were thinking Revishal Imperative right now. Anyway, I've had a similar thing happen with egg jelly. I know what you mean. You're right, I wasn't thinking that. Super hardcore. Alright, tell me something else, Egghead. Is your real name Jermaine? Dakor, hardcore Jermaine Egghead. Um, basically, yes it is. Why are there lungs in your belt buckle? Lungs are for love. Why would lungs be for love? When Dolores Day was anointed... When Dolores Day was anointed innocent, her lungs started glowing through her body. For the world loved her and she loved it back. Yeah! Why wouldn't they be? Are lungs not the place where you hold the breath of your soul? It makes perfect sense. Love! He stops yelling and suddenly the world seems to stop. In a woman's lungs, lonely as I am, I am not afraid. This strange, damaged feeling grows on and on because I've never loved someone like you before. Oh, well, my morale, morale went up. A dopamine surge accompanies the words. Feels like electricity flowing down your scalp, dissipating into your neck. Feels good like a spark of life that moribund sponge you call your body. In that moribund sponge you call your body. Alright, I'm going to try the physical instrument. Maybe your body can tell you what Arno... Van Eyck's jam is missing to make it harder core. Nope. No, that'd be silly. Your body isn't thinking it's for robust, wholesome things like discus, javelin, the 400 meter hurdles. Hmm, discus. See ya, Egghead. Alright, here comes the night. I'm gonna go now. Yeah.
I'm gonna go. Wonder what, um... Well, Kim probably has nothing to say about that. Hey, Asel, we have a question for you. Just one. Very quick. The shaggy-haired girl kneels on the sea ice. She looks up as you approach. So you talk to my associates, right? Are you going to help us? With the church, I mean. I'll help you, alright. Great. Let us know if there's any progress, will ya? We've been uh, waiting for weeks here. Yeah, the other told me you went inside the church. What did you see in there? Oh, that. You're not going to believe me. There's no point in telling you. She's less prone to blurting out Crab Man than the others. Go ahead and tell me. We'll see. Oh, okay. She nods. I went in and saw a woman next to one of those machines there. Noid called it a mainframe. She was dressed like someone who's been raised by their grandmother, you know. Strange old clothes. Had this absent expression. Didn't say anything. Just stood still. Go on. Oh, and then, you know, right behind her, a man crawled down the wall, upside down like a crab. Down a church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. He stopped right before he got to the floor and then hung there like, like, looking at me. Right at me. I fucking turned around and walked out. End of story. Leggy like grab, you say? Lieutenant nods, his face is stone. What does this crab man look like? It was too dark. She shakes her head. I couldn't tell exactly. Come on, she obviously could. She already went into detail. Come on, quit stalling on me. What did he look like? He looked like a banger, okay? He was all muscular and stuff. Had a mesh tank top. I know it sounds ridiculous, but only made it scarier in a way. Wait, we have a mesh tank top. A grab and a banger? The lieutenant raises an eyebrow. Yes, a banger is in a mesca gang member. I know what it sounds like, but that's what I saw. Hmm. You're, you're wrong, I do believe you. To reason a brow. Why? Um, what would you stand to gain from lying? Nothing. Anyway, what else? I'd like to know more about your associates. My associates? She blows on her chilled fingers. I ain't got much to say about them. What do you mean? You must know something about them. Of course I do. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. Okay, what about you? Tell me something about yourself. Me, I'm a silver bird. Aha, okay, maybe I'll ask, about the, uh, I'll ask later about all this. I don't know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but... Uh, okay, right, let's leave. With that, there's one last thing I'd like to do. Which is open the drawbridge. Two, uh, a pane of Eternite has been planted into the snow. Two poles are holding it up. Barely holding it up, it could fall over at any moment. A stronger gust of wind might be enough. What is this? It looks like a makeshift bridge. It adjusts its color against the cold breeze. Could be convenient. Let's push it over. The pain falls into the icy snow of the soft fuck. And with that, I'm gonna end the episode there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.